God, I love this tool. This is so much better. I can't believe it took me 30 years to figure out that I needed to do this. Hello everybody, this is David Collins from Ann Arbor Guitars. Today we are going to revisit the fret file uh, that we have adapted into our reciprocating saw that we showed a couple of days ago. Show you a couple important changes as to how we use this for anyone who might be planning on replicating this kind of a system or making your own version of it. The biggest change was actually brought to my attention by one of the viewers and quite honestly made me feel uh, like quite a bonehead for not doing this myself. Makes me feel I've been doing this wrong for 30 years. Many, many years ago I did work as a machinist and I'm more than familiar with the importance of the appropriate cutting fluids for different types of cutters and machines. But on fret work it's something I've never used. It's, you know, traditionally thought of as work by a file. Uh, which I have used in some cases with file work, things like soap and wax to help carry debris, carry the shavings away from the workpiece to deliver a cleaner finish to the surface, but I've never used it with fretting before. So by recommendation on one of the viewers and actually a couple of colleagues, I have a handful of colleagues who do use lubricants with their cutting fluid, absolute night and day difference in how this works. I decided for a cutting fluid on this, the most appropriate to use was likely mineral oil. Mineral oil is basically sold as fretboard oil. It's perfectly safe for the wood. Most of the oils you buy as lemon oil or orange oil, things like that actually are basically mineral oil with scent additives to them. Even though mineral oil is perfectly safe for the wood, I don't want to flood it. You saturate this with oil for too long, it can work down into the, uh, into the joints, into the fret seating, and potentially cause problems there. So we want to be modest with any oils that we use on this. We don't just want to flood the whole thing. Now this guitar came in for a fret dress not because the frets were uneven. Actually, the level was pretty good on this. There was a little bit of a hollow right in here up around the body joint where there was a bit of rise at the fingerboard extension. Not uncommon at all, but overall it was good. The problem the customer had with it was the feel of the frets and is what I often call school bus frets. Now we went over some of the details on how to best choose the appropriate size file for the frets. This guitar serves as a perfect example of what happens when you either don't choose the right file or simply don't use the right file properly. Uh, and we're going to go into a few of the details of how you have to use and how you have to handle these files to actually get the proper shape on the fret. It's not as simple as going in, cutting the fret, and the file just delivers the right shape. There is a great deal of operator influence and can affect how the shape of the fret can be delivered differently from the same file by different hands. What happened in this guitar we have uh, is that the frets were leveled at some point, probably at the factory actually, and they came in and took off the tops of the frets. They must have taken off a reasonable amount uh, to get them this flat. But when they came in, they used an extremely wide shaped file. Um, and so what we end up with is this radius up here, which is way wider than it needs to be. And this is what I often refer to as the school bus fret, um, where we have you know near vertical sides and then this, this very shallow uh, arc at the top. Um, and when you slide your finger up and down the board, you catch on these. These basically end up as corners if they're not polished out, and hands can definitely feel it. So that's what it's in here to correct. So our main goal, although we are improving the level, we're bringing it a little bit more precise than it came in, our main goal is to really establish a better, smoother crown for the player's comfort. Uh, because it's, it's so bad as it is right now that it truly interferes with... Um, with his, his enjoyment and use of the instrument. So how do we choose what type of file to use and how do we, how do we use it? These frets are 80,000th in width, but with the top cut down on them, um, they are less than 40,000th in height. So if we were to try to use our narrow radius fret file, which is about an 80,000th diameter cutter, we would never actually be able to get to these bottom corners because the center of the circle it's cutting would be below the fretboard. Here's the fretboard and the center of the circle would be somewhere out here. So what it would end up delivering is a smooth curve through the top part, but when we got down near the bottom it would have this little shelf here where, where it would actually cut, um, it would narrow the fret toward the base but not cut all the way down. Um, that's obviously something we don't want. So instead, we're stuck with the compromise of having our 80,000s wide fret 
uh, and coming in with our next narrowest cutter, which is 125 thousandths, which will deliver, I'm exaggerating here, 125 would actually be a little bit lower, but let's just draw this for demonstration. It will deliver exactly that school bus shape that it came in with, which is exactly what we're trying to get rid of. So what we have to do in the process of filing is actually come in and rock the file from side to side to come in and hit on the sides and radius in those quarters. We're actually creating a tighter radius than the 125 in the end product, but it does require uh, some intentional positioning of the file. And in doing that, we can take down these corners and actually come in and shape a nice smooth surface that'll feel comfortable to the hands through here. So let's bring the guitar out and show you how we do that. Okay, so now I've already leveled this, I've already started crowning it before I pulled out the cameras, uh, but I did think this was worth showing. Now we're gonna put just a little bit of oil onto the fret file. Now we're gonna show you how we radius the frets with a wider file than the end crown we want to deliver. You can come in and start with the fret file running straight, but then we're going to want to start rocking it side to side and really coming in on those corners until we almost hit the wood. There's a bit of a learning curve in getting to know your tools. Um, every tool you really need to get to learn how it works, the little nuances of its radius. No, uh, none of these surfaces are ever perfect, but um, you work with it for a while and you can get a good feel for exactly where your angles are, where your limits are to do this proper. Still a little ways to go. These things were ridiculously flat, quite honest. These were so flat, I honestly don't think it could be due to entirely to bad leveling at the factory. I think it's the shape of the wire, uh, the shape wire that they're having rolled for these frets. Clean off the debris, add a bit more oil, come back in again. This is another uh, incredible thing about this tool that I hadn't even thought of is flat fretboards. Anyone who has tried uh, filing a truly flat surface, and this definitely applies to fretboards, should know how hard or near impossible it is for the arm to truly cut a perfectly straight line. If you come in and try to move the file back and forth in a straight line, it doesn't matter how good you are, how careful you are, there's always some tendency for the file to roll forward, and I'm exaggerating this, uh, on the forward stroke and back on the back stroke. This is the natural movement that is created. Usually it's ever so slight, but when you're trying to level frets on a fret flat board with a flat file, you end up seeing the ends get hit long before the center. It puts more pressure on the ends, at least, than on the center as you're filing. There are tricks that luthiers have developed, and there's different types of files that have a more radius cutter that can be used to hit spot points in the middle, but it's very hard to do with a flat section of a flat file. This tool, however, does not have that same weakness. Um, it is not, it's a perfect linear actuator. The file is moving perfectly back and forth. So when you're doing flat fretboards, as long as you can get your angle right, it cuts remarkably consistent all the way across. These Stumac files do have a wonderful little feature, and that is the last inch or so of this file actually has a bit of a taper to it. It rolls off, so it's flat from about here to here, and then right about here, it goes to a tilt. So it does actually allow us a very minor tilt that doesn't interfere with the back and forth motion of the saw. It does actually allow us to come in and hit spots in the center if we need to hit isolated areas. Clean the file, re-oil, Start again. And there's that rocking motion that we are trying to make sure we are taking that round all the way down to a smooth curve across the entire crown. This is actually why I was a really late adopter of the shaped diamond files is because uh, I objected to this flaw uh, of specific preset increments of radius of the cutters 
that didn't cover all of the in-between sizes that we run into. And so I was, I stubbornly held on to using my three corner file, which is still a great method. I still do pull it out occasionally. There's jobs where it is the right way to do it. But I wouldn't touch these for a long time because I wanted to make sure I could keep that smooth, even crown that was shaped individually for the guitar. Finally, as these files improved and I learned how to use them better and more properly, I'm now much more comfortable with being able to get a perfectly smooth crown individually shaped to the fret with these files. But it does take a little bit of intentional uh, use of the tool and manipulation to create the end shape that you want it to. You can't just rely on the, the shape of the tool to do it for you. I love this tool. This is, is it's just so much better. And with using oil as I you know foolishly wasn't before I should have been all along, um, it actually cuts faster and smoother. Okay, we finished out the coarse leveling. We went through with a rather fine leveling beam because it didn't need to come down too much, but we came through with the 150 grit crowning file because there was so much reshaping needed on these. Now we've gone through and kissed the tops again, uh, made sure everything is still level, and we're coming back with the 300 grit to get ready to polish it out. And I'm gonna turn the speed down on here because we really don't have a whole lot to re remove. We don't wanna overshoot our recrowning with the 300 grit here. Now, this method where we have to actually rotate the file to get down onto the sides, we use the next widest crown that's necessary um, above the fret width and crown height that I explained in the last video, the cord length and the arc height. You can calculate from that. Always choose the next widest uh, cutting diameter that you need from there. And then we need to come in and actually rotate to come around down and shape down on the sides to get a nice smooth crown to the fret all the way across. When doing that though, it's a little bit trickier. It's easier to make mistakes. There are a few areas on here where I did hit the tops. I can see I removed the initial leveling marks, that tiny stripe we wanna see in the top. We're probably talking in the range of one or two tenths of a thousandth of an inch. Um, still quite good, but uh, since it takes such little time, we're going to go back and do one final leveling before doing a final crown. Now, these leveling beams we used uh, are ones we made ourselves. We actually surfaced them all. We lapped them all on a 24-inch surface plate we have that is... Uh, certified to 25 millionths of an inch accuracy. Um, so I'm quite comfortable with the beams. We have also in the past, when I was developing these methods, we used to use, um, for a brief period, I used this 3M lapping film, which is a precision lapping film. It has a very precise backing and lay down of the grit. It's a 30 micron cut. What I found over time is that after doing, you know, many of these with the lapping film, and with the traditional 3M rolls of paper, is that when I come in and level with the finest grit we use is 320 on the leveling process, um, I can come back in after that, after leveling with the 320, after finishing the crowning, finishing the polishing, having it ready to string up, and then come back in with a lapping beam with the precision 30 micron film on there and not find the slightest trace of error. We're talking the lightest pressure one pass and it hits everything perfectly at the peak. So we don't use the lapping film regularly anymore, pretty much only for recalibrating and resurfacing the beams once a year or so when we need to. And that looks pretty good. We really didn't affect the level uh, to any notable degree anywhere with the, with the uh, minor touches on the top. I just really wanted to double check it. I am going to come back in and do one final light kiss with the crowning file. And now that we have fully shaped the sides and we're really only touching up that very tip right at the peak, we no longer have to do rocking in this last phase. We can come in and do a straight cut and it'll blend perfectly with the overall shape of the, of the crown.
Now, when I first made this tool, I really figured that this stage I would be putting the tool aside for and coming in with one of the hand files and crowning it here uh, as just a slower, more precise, careful process. I don't feel that way anymore. Um, we can be so careful with this and, uh, and so precise that the benefit it gives by this automated linear motion uh, actuator of the file instead of the natural tendency of a hand filing pattern to roll back and forth and put pressure on the outside edges depending on where it's going. I actually feel like I can do that stage better with this than I can by hand. I just turn the speed all the way down to its lowest speed because I don't want to remove any significant material here. Just a light kiss is all it takes. That's just beautiful. And it cuts so much smoother with the oil. I really can't believe it took me so long to adopt this uh, with, with this type of cutting and filing. So this crazy idea for a tool just keeps getting better. Um, I'm loving this every time I use it. The addition of a cutting fluid. Uh, again, all we're using is standard mineral oil, baby oil. You can get it anywhere. Um, and through this whole process, really three uh, stages of recrowning, we used uh, one and a half milliliters of it. So we don't have to use a whole lot. It's perfectly safe for the board. Again, don't saturate the board, um, but uh, clean it off as it runs off on. A lot of times uh, as I'm cutting these, I'm using so little on the file that it doesn't even touch the wood. But when it does, we just come in and clean it up. Um, we're gonna actually, after the polishing, we're gonna treat this whole thing with the oil and wax uh, compound anyway. So mineral oil is great for this. The addition of cutting oil absolutely improved this process so much. Uh, so much so that I would say even if you're not using any crazy motorized fret filing system like this, but you're using traditional diamond files, start using just a drop or two of mineral oil on the file as you're doing it. Uh, it definitely helps the results. This is going to be uh, a quicker polish. The, the final sanding and polishing of these frets is going to take less time. They just have such a smoother surface texture than filing them dry. And this customer is going to be absolutely thrilled. You can run your hands up and down this board now without feeling that sharp edge of the school bus frets. So if you are filing your own frets, be aware of that. Be very aware of the radius. You don't necessarily have to do the math of calculating from the cord length and arc height and all of that. The simplest rule to follow is to take a measurement of your fret's width and of your fret's height. And if the height is less than half the width of your fret, choose the next widest crowning file wider than the fret crown itself. So this is an 80 thousandths wide fret, but it measures out at about 32 to 34 thousandths height across the board. So we have to use the next wider file from the 80 thousandths, which with the Stumac files is currently 125 thousandths. Regarding how to check your files, if you are using shaped diamond files, the easiest way is just using a drill bit set as a radius gauge set. So let's take our two 300 grit files, and we're going to take the one with the narrow and the wide, and go through and pick out drill bits and set them into the slot. It's probably hard, I, I don't have a macro lens here, but Get it to where it doesn't rock, but where you can't see any light underneath at the bottom, and that is an approximate, a good enough approximate gauge of the diameter. That was about 80 thousandths for the narrow on the medium. I can get a little bit of rock in this 120. Uh, this is a numbered set, so it skips 125, but my 1 8 when I push it down, it's solid and it doesn't quite doesn't quite fully seem to hit the bottom in the center. Um, so between 120 and 128, these are roughly in that range. Um, and then again, on their next size file, uh, by my measures, the wide uh, fret wire is around 200 thousandths of an inch, and the jumbo is about 250. So this file is really only gonna be used for the widest of frets, talking you know, over 100, 110 thousandths of an inch, that have been leveled down significantly. This is what I would use on an old Gibson fretless wonder, or if you had 
115 thousandths wide frets that are on their third fret level and they're down to 20 thousandths tall. In that case, you would be using a 200 thousandths, maybe even go with the 250 radius if it gets really low. But for the most part, the standard narrow and medium file is the one you're gonna be using 90% of the time. So I think that's it for today. Uh, please be sure to subscribe and we will be back with more videos and tips and tricks as soon as possible. Thanks so much.